Hey guys, it's TechGuyN here. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to test a motherboard and CPU so that way you make sure they work before you put them in your PC case or just how to test a motherboard so that way you don't get scammed if you're buying up the third hand marketplace. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that here today. Because you guys know I have this MSI gaming uh, mother motherboard that actually died on me during a power outage. However, I'm pretty confident to say the CPU is still alive. If you're wondering what CPU this is, this is the i9-9900K. That's right, it's an insane gaming CPU. So hopefully it's not dead. But what we're gonna do here today was we're gonna test the CPU and test the motherboard we're gonna pick up from off Facebook Marketplace at a coffee shop. And I'm gonna show you what you're gonna need to do in order to make sure everything works fine, to make sure you just don't have a bad board or a bad CPU. So before we go, I wanna tell you guys what you're gonna need. First of all, you're gonna need a motherboard and CPU. And of course, on top of that, you will need a power supply and also a GPU. And the reason why we're bringing a GPU with us or just the test is because we wanna plug it into our motherboard to make sure we have a video out. Because if we get a video out, that means the motherboard and CPU are processing everything and we get a signal that's a good sign if we don't get a signal yeah that's a bad sign and the other thing we will need on top of those is a screwdriver that actually uses to turn on the motherboard and i'm gonna show you guys how to do that here okay so i got the motherboard and everything from that guy and i've already tested it and worked perfectly fine which i'll show you guys later here's footage of that to confirm but what you need to do when you actually set up a pc you have a few things first of all you have your cpu installed into the motherboard so that way you can test both of them. We've installed our GPU since we do not have onboard and graded graphics. We also have ourselves our RAM right here installed perfectly fine. Now we installed it, of course, in the actual uh, two and four slot. I actually just installed in the wrong slot, so let me fix that. Now, like I was saying, make sure your RAM is installed in the right slot. So you can see earlier I installed it in the one and two slots, but you need to make sure it's installed into the two and four slots like you see here, which is good, that's good to go. So the last thing you need to do to make sure your actual motherboard and CPU work to actually test it is adding your PSU. Now, this is of course the other thing you're gonna need to actually test and all you wanna do is simple. There are only three connectors you need to use from this. So first of all, your 24 pin for the actual motherboard, the power, the board in itself. So we're just gonna plug that on in. Next up, you will need your PCIe cable if you do not have an APU on your actual motherboard, uh, which is an APU CPU, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. So we're gonna plug this into our GPU, of course. That way, we can actually get picture. And then finally, you'll need the last cable, which is the CPU cable, which you can see it says CPU right there. However, I have this plugged in. This one's kind of just tough to plug in and unplug. And I also don't have particularly the best grip right now because I've been testing all day. Uh, it's just make sure they plug that in. And once you have these three connectors, all you have to do is get your trusty power cable, plug this on into your PSU. Then all you need to do is actually power on the board. Now you don't have a power switch. However, there's a few ways to power it, which I'll show you. So let's just turn this on for the time being. So sometimes with high-end motherboards, they will provide a actual power button rate, which you can see right here. We can like push this and power on system. However, if you do not have access to like a power switch and stuff, what you can do is take the actual headers on your motherboard, which you can see there's some headers down here for actually the front panel for your switch, power button, all that jazz. If you didn't have access to any of these headers, all you would do would be the first, turn on the power supply, make sure everything is corrected properly. Then what you do is take your screwdriver, line it up with the pins where it says the power button. And of course you just want to bridge it, which is just taking the two actual metal pieces, putting your actual uh, thing in between them, which taps both of them, which sends a signal to the board to power on through the actual bridge. So you can see where it says, plus pw minus that's the power switch so theoretically if i did have a power supply connected in here i just take my actual thing line it on up and just touch those two bins just for a second and once you've done that they'll send a surge to the system to power it on so this is actually some footage for me when i'm actually in panera bread meeting up with a guy to actually test out his motherboard i literally brought a monitor an hdmi cable of course i also brought the power cable for the monitor was a power cord for the power supply the power supply the GPU, uh, and then the CPU. Now keep in mind, he did bring the motherboard, so we have all the components necessary to test the actual motherboard and CPU. And of course, since this thing didn't need a bridge, which I originally thought it did, it didn't because it had the power button, we could literally just push it on and test it, and it worked perfectly well. And we didn't need a cooler because we're only testing it for 10 to 20 seconds to make sure it actually boots and lets us know like there is a BIOS because it sends a BIOS signal then you can install Windows and set this actually on up. With that though, we of course got this board all set up and good to go. And that's how you test your motherboard and also CPU. Now keep in mind, I do plan to use this for a PC build video. So you don't want to miss out on any of that. Get subscribed and make sure to smash the like button if you did find this video helpful. And I'll see you guys for another one.